What's up guys, Safash Rafia. Welcome back to Talking Tech. We have a special guest today on the series. We have Max from the Max Bowser channel. Tech YouTuber, just like me, 13 years of age, Canadian. And yes, you know what happens in Talking Tech. We talk about the latest tech, latest trends. And here he is, so you can introduce yourself. Hey, thanks. Uh, thanks so much for having me on here, Seth. So, um, I am 12 years old. I am a tech YouTuber, and I have about 950 subscribers. Um, hoping to hit 1K soon. Uh, and yeah, I'm just really passionate about kind of, you know, all types of technology. And so I'm really happy to be here to chat tech with you. So yeah, Max, like me, is a really enthusiastic tech like enthusiast, I guess. So yeah, straight into the question. So Max. A lot of the people that have seen your videos should know that you are on the iOS side. You have a MacBook, iPhone, iPad. You're you're really into the ecosystem. What do you think about the Apple ecosystem? Is there anything better? And can anything beat it? So this is a question that I get really often because like people ask me to cover Android, you know, in my style, but, um, you know, I've never even tried Android before, so I don't have the sort of, um, the perspective of an Android user. Um, but for sure, I think that, uh, just the way that iOS optimizes everything so well, you know, like I make a logo for this and then I send it from my computer over to my iPad or to my phone or whatever. And so it's like a super seamless experience, you know, for sure airdrop, which is a massive one for a ton of people. Um, but then I also think uh, things like kind of having uh, messages on, uh, you know, your computer and then also on your phone and then also on your iPad and able to like transfer stuff easily. And uh, I think it's just, it's an interesting ecosystem because for sure it's incredibly helpful once you're completely into it, but to get into it, it's like a kind of a difficult process because for sure like all these apple products are really expensive um and so uh kind of building an ecosystem where you're really like in in the ecosystem is usually a really challenging thing to do and so for sure i think um that the ecosystem is great but i think that there are definitely better options out there for the money that you can pay for apple products um and so for sure i think even though it is great maybe it's not completely worth the money yeah, I totally understand about your airdrop situation. My friend came around the other day with his iPhone. We were we were doing a bit of reviewing, so we took some clips from the iPhone photos. And I was going to plug it into my MacBook to transfer the files, but then my friend's like, wait, you have a MacBook, maybe we can just airdrop. He airdropped, it was so, so quick, so seamless, and then it just made me think, I think iPhone is the next move for me because I right now record from my phone and transferring files is quite a hassle for me because first it's to usb then to mac then all of that airdrop was just so so easy but yeah i also understand your point about the expense of apple products they are expensive and buying everything takes time and there are definitely better options all right so next question what do you think about social media apps for influencers so we are tech youtubers we like we want we want to grow like we we obviously want to grow on youtube what for you is the best social media app for me i've been experimenting with tiktok i got 25000 followers from nothing really like just posting a couple i'll elaborate on that further but what do you think social media wise what is the best yeah so um i think my answer is pretty um obvious to most people um which is probably just um twitter like twitter has been the best app for overall like growing my channel and um like taking my channel from you know here to here and um like I've made some awesome friends on Twitter and I think um for sure Twitter is just like the one thing that you need to start a YouTube channel I feel like um you know you say like you know you need your phone you need something to film with you need all that stuff but I feel like to actually bring your YouTube channel um like to actually make your help your YouTube channel evolve, I think is a super challenging thing to do, but it's a really easy thing to do on Twitter. And so like, if you make quality videos and you're good at what you do, you kind of just go right ahead and you just skyrocket and you're really successful on there. So that's something that I've noticed on Twitter that um, I've kind of like almost built a community. I don't want to credit myself with that, but like for sure I have um, made some awesome friends and we've sort of um, made like a really nice friend group. And so it's uh, definitely Twitter is one of the best things to have in your kit to uh, kind of grow your channel and take it from 
you know. Yeah, true, definitely. We we met through Twitter. I've met a lot of people through Twitter, like you. We've got Tech R Us. We've That's got true. Johannes. Yeah. We've got like a load, a yeah. load of people that I met through Twitter. Twitter is definitely big, but I just want to tell you, TikTok is something else because I uploaded just uh, just like a normal video how to make your phone faster i'm approaching 1 million views on tiktok i think i'm on like 950k on that video it's actually mind blowing and i've just got so many followers so many people just appreciating that i took time out and just put that on tiktok and people really really like that so for anyone who's watching who is starting like a youtube channel or whatever make sure to use tiktok for whatever you can because the growth on there is amazing you just need to know what you're doing you should definitely try max highly suggested that that's amazing yeah so i um i picked up tiktok in quarantine i guess last year um and so for sure like i've been you know i experimented on tiktok but you know back then like you know that would have been like in early 2020 back then i had like you know maybe I had just hit 50 subscribers. Like I had, you know, no traction, no audience, no anything. And also I was not, I wasn't like doing anything interesting. I wasn't doing anything techie actually at that. I was literally just making like stupid lip syncing videos or whatever. So before I do start TikTok, I probably have to archive all of my old videos, but for sure, like I, I can believe that it's a really great tool. So I'm going to have to check that out. Let's move on. So you live in Canada. So I, I do. Mean, yeah. So what is life like there? So like just a bit of life um, part of the video. How's life like in Canada? Yeah, uh, life is fantastic in Canada, actually. I mean, like, you know, the the big sort of thing, like, you know, universal health care, um, like uh, amazing stuff like that. Amazing education. Um, like even if you go to a, pro uh, a public school or an independent school or whatever kind of school you choose to go to is like a really good experience. And um, especially in Ontario, like it's been really good recently. And, you know, like Toronto is a beautiful city. That's where I live. Um, and so it's just a great experience living in Canada. And it's a pretty fair society. It's a very diverse society as well. Um, like, you know, there are a ton of immigrants here, which is um, an amazing thing. And, you know, there's a bunch of cultural experience that you can even get in different parts of Toronto and parts of uh, Canada. So for sure, I think Canada is a fantastic place to live. And it's probably, it would probably be my um, place of choice to live right now in the world's current situation. I mean, we're handling COVID well. Um, like there are just a bunch of reasons that it's a fantastic place to live for sure. Yeah, definitely. I've seen Canada. It's really, really nice. I had a teacher who used to come from Canada. She would always talk about the snow you'd get there, the landscapes, everything. Literally out my window right now, I'm looking at like, maybe like a meter of snow like it's a massively big amount of snow for sure so yeah that is a that's something that happens in Canada yeah here in the United Kingdom like a couple of days ago weeks ago I guess we had a bit of snow everyone was freaked out that wow we got snow and it was probably like a couple of centimeters of snow and in Canada you guys have like snow like not nearly all the time and a couple of meters there's like, from never there's like never not snow in Canada like there's Snow somewhere in Canada. Like, it's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's move on to a bit more tech. What do you think of the future of, like, like electric cars? Because Tesla, we've got Tesla. Like, that's big. But, like, do you think anyone can ever come close to Tesla? Or do you want a Tesla right now? And, like, just what, what's, like, what type of electric transportation like so we got electric scooters everything what where is electric transportation going right for sure yes yeah. so i think um in its current form i think electric cars have not become mainstream at all um i mean you know they're people like to think that like if you're going to market a car to, like you know 35,000 American dollars um that's going to be like super mainstream and everything but the reality is that a lot of people like buy used cars from garages for like maybe ten thousand dollars if they're able to uh, if they're able to actually market a tesla at that price i think that would be number one extraordinary but also it would help electric cars become much more mainstream and so i think that in a certain respect um electric cars in their current form are like sort of something that feel a little bit untouchable unless you're like 
part of the super rich, maybe not like the super, super rich, but like, you know, it's, it's not mainstream enough that like people who right now would be driving a Honda or a, Toy- uh, or a Toyota or whatever would be buying an electric car. Even things like Chevrolet or uh, who else? Toyota introducing electric cars isn't going to make it much more mainstream in itself um, because come to think of it, those are actually only hybrid cars. And so, you know, it's just a little bit untouchable right now for a lot of people. And um, my family has already committed that our next car will be an electric car. Um, and so that's going to be interesting to see where the electric car market is then in the future. But I'm definitely interested in electric cars. And I mean, we're going to have to see where that goes because it's an interesting market and it's a definitely an interesting um, idea. Yeah, I definitely understand where the point where you're coming from about how they're not mainstream enough. I definitely agree with that. The prices are way, way too high. And the other problem that I have in my country specifically is charging stations. It's, it's very hard to find. Like You could just be low on battery and then the next thing you know, all right, I need to find a charging station ASAP. And for some people, you can't charge from your homes either, which can be a bit of a hassle. But yeah, t- t- electric cars need to get more mainstream as soon as possible for sure yeah what 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 are your what are your interests like every day like apart from tech yeah so um definitely tech is a big one but i'm a very political person i grew up in a very political family um like we're the sort of people who like yell at the tv if we see someone who we don't like or whatever and so um that's definitely kind of um something i'm really interested in i'm interested in the, i'm interested in the news um i read the news a lot every day especially on Twitter nowadays, that's made it a lot easier. Um, But yeah, for sure, I'm interested in um, a whole range of things. Um, You know, I'm interested in graphic design, which I guess maybe fits into tech a a little bit. I don't know. Videography, filmmaking, uh, the news, politics, all that sort of thing is something that's really interesting to me. And so that's made me kind of stick out from like my friends for a while. And um, kind of I've become like very confident in uh, kind of knowing um, that I have differences from them and um, I've become a lot more confident. And so uh, my interests have definitely become more prominent in my life because of that. That's that's good though, like being in polit- politics, stuff like that, making yourself unique. I actually really, really like that point of view. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. So, um, okay, so this is quite a big one. We've got um, Apple's new event coming. I think every, every time like there's a talking tech episode, we have to talk about this. The new Macs and the new iPhones. So let's start off with the Macs first. Apparently, we're getting a 14-inch M1X and stuff like that. What What do you guys? What do you think of Apple's new releases coming soon? So I think that um, I'm I'm very very for sure interested in um kind of the uh the total like revamp of um the M1 Max, um or the M2 Max or whatever is coming in Q3 or whenever that's supposed to come. Um, and so I'm definitely very interested in that, and that's something that I'm gonna we're gonna have to see like how that sort of checks out because you know a 14 inch MacBook Pro, but then having this like this major redesign, like the biggest redesign we've seen in since 2016, five years um, at this point. I think that that's going to for sure be something that Apple might have to charge more for. And so even though like the uh, M1 Mac Mini is, you know, $699, like a fantastic price for a computer, the uh, M1 MacBook Air is, what, $899, $999, which is like an amazing price as well for a laptop that delivers that sort of performance. And so I think for sure that I'm interested to see what the 14-inch and 16-inch price will be later on in the year because the 16 inch as we've already seen with the intel processor is a fantastically beastly computer like it's an amazing computer but i also think that this 14 inch macbook pro which may have uh, started at you know like 14.99 15.99 usually with an intel processor uh, or with an m1 processor but then bringing this redesign in, i feel like is going to maybe make them market this to a much more pro kind of market even though maybe techies like myself would want to be going for that but then you know they market the 14 inch at like three thousand dollars baseline would be like out of this world crazy i don't know 
having a redesign is always a difficult thing. And, you know, everybody was shocked when the iPad Pro was redesigned or when the iPhone was redesigned. Um, and so I'm just going to have to see what that's like and how that redesign kind of brings up the price and brings down the amount of people who will buy it just because of the price. Yeah, I bought the M1 MacBook Pro like quite recently because it's my yeah. first Mac. M1 has been amazing from literally every single person I've heard from. Yeah, It's been amazing. And now that I've heard of a redesign, I'm kind of thinking, should I have bought this or should I have waited for the redesign? Because I guess the bezels are quite thick if you do look at it like that. Touch bar, not everyone likes, but I guess it's okay, touch bar. And... Yeah, I don't know whether I'll be upgrading soon because this is an amazing machine, powering everything I do nearly every day. So, yeah, the redesign, quite exciting. And I'm actually really excited for what Apple have in stock. Maybe M1 iMacs with iMac redesign because those have just been, like, as they are for quite a long time now. So I'm really excited for the iMac redesign. So, Max, we're approaching the end of our episode. Do you have any questions for me? I do actually have some questions for you. So um, I was wondering, uh, what inspired you to start creating technology videos? Okay, so I get this question a lot. Um, basically, what happened is I was watching YouTube. A bit bored, just came downstairs. I was watching YouTube and I came across Marquez Brownlee. Everybody knows the legendary MKBHD. I watched a couple of his videos. I went quite back, like quite back into like his old videos. And I saw he started at the exact same age as me, which was really fascinating. So I guess I took that. I got whatever tech I had around the living, like around the house. And I just went on. I tried to review everything and I've just tried to work as hard as I can to get as big as possible. And the dream is to one day get Marquez Brownlee onto the Talking Tech series. A bit ambitious, but hopefully that will happen. So yeah, it was j basically just me wanting to be like Marquez Brownlee and just having that taste for tech. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the only question I have for you. I get asked that question a lot as well. So um, that's something that I was interested to hear uh, from you as well. So thank you for answering that. What about you? What inspired you to do tech videos? Yeah, so um, I've always had sort of a love for tech. Like I, um, you know, I saved up to buy myself an iPad when I was seven, maybe years old. Um, and I've just always been um, pretty passionate about tech. And once I um, sort of started, ma uh, started making technology videos in late 2019, um, I did sort of, uh, you know, find out or uh, I, I kind of found a, a love for technology that maybe I hadn't noticed before. Um, and that was a, a really awesome thing to find because now I'm here and I'm um, making, you know, the best videos that I can and I'm working really hard and I'm kind of loving technology a lot. So um, I'm really happy about uh, that, that I kind of started YouTube and it brought me to this point where I'm really passionate about technology. So that's something that's, uh, that I like a lot. Yeah, definitely. I've been passionate about tech so much. Every single time we would get a new piece of tech in my house, I would go absolutely crazy. No, I want to open it. I want to see it first. It's just something that's been with me since I was young and is going on and hopefully will be forever. For sure. So... So yeah, that's been it guys. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Max Bowser. His YouTube channel and Twitter will be linked in the description. Do you have any last words to say? Yes, one last word. Subscribe to Saf Ashraf. Thanks Saf for having me on here. No problem. So yeah, make sure to subscribe to Max. His link will be in the description. Thank you guys for watching. Saf Ashraf. Peace.